What's up, Data Pipeliners? This is Data Engineer One. Welcome back to another episode on writing data pipelines with Kedro. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to set up your Kedro project to use Spark. Now, Spark is, of course, everyone's fabulous favorite data science, data engineering tool. And in this talk, we're going to be showing you guys how you can set up your Kedro pipeline to better interact and work with a Spark session. Um, before we get into it, just a quick announcement. On Friday, July 24th, I'll be speaking at the EuroPython conference on Kedro. I'm going to be giving a talk called Writing Collaborative Data Pipelines with Kedro. Uh, if you guys are going to EuroPython 2020, hope to see you guys there. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. So as we already know, Kedro 0.16.3 comes with starters. And so if you haven't taken a look at the last video, highly recommend that you do. Otherwise, we're going to be using the Kedro starter of PySpark Iris. So this is going to be our Iris data set, and it's going to be using PySpark. This time, in order to create the project, I'm going to go ahead and use the GitHub URL just to demonstrate that in fact you can use GitHub URLs as starter URLs. It's going to download the starter from that GitHub repository and then create the project based on that template. So let's go ahead and call this PySpark demo and let's create the project. Obviously, one of the most important things about a PySpark pipeline is that you instantiate your PySpark session. What happens in the PySpark starter is that they actually do the instantiation of your Spark session inside of the context. So you'll see something here that you don't often see. In the project context, what they've done is every time you initialize the context, you will also initialize the Spark session. Now, this is good and bad. It's good because it allows this automatic starting of the Spark session, whether you're running the project using command line or you're, you're running the project using your Jupyter Notebook. Anytime you have a context, you're automatically creating your Spark session. But this can be a little bit of a problem if you don't necessarily want to create a Spark session for your particular workflow. For example, if you already have data that has been pre-computed by Spark and you just want to get that data and run it through Pandas, then instantiating a Spark session doesn't really make sense. You're going to be using your cluster resources at best, and at worst, you're going to be blocking your coworkers. And of course, we don't want to be doing that. Right? So what I also recommend here, you can add in an extra little environmental variable here. And this will allow you to control whether or not you want to have that Spark session initialized from the get-go. And so, of course, you can use this when you're starting up your Kedro notebooks uh, or even when you're loading the Kedro project context into a Kedro notebook that you're working with. Now, the next part here, uh, and this is a little bit interesting, the, the way that the Spark session works is it also uses your config loader in order to figure out what are the Spark configurations. And so this is super awesome because if you're working, for example, in different Spark environments, you're going to need different configurations for those Spark environments. So let's open up the Spark config here. This is your basic Spark config variable schema. So you can just use these guys as necessary inside of your pipeline. But what's really great here is that because we're using Kedro, we can change the Spark configuration based on the environment that we are running in. So we can have this, this, for example, Spark configuration for your main project pipeline. Maybe in your local pipeline, you want to have a little bit more driver memory in order to do your workflow, because of course your workflow is so important. So of course we can just increase that in our own personal one right here. Now, the final thing that I want to point out is this idea of adding packages to Spark. So sometimes what will happen is we're going to be creating a lot of nodes inside of Kedro that may need to be imported as a specialized library into Spark. You can, of course, use the .addPy file. And then what you do is you actually point that .py file path to your local Kedro egg. Now, how do you create a local Kedro egg? Well, it's actually very simple. 
all you have to do is you type in Ketro package. And what Ketro will do is it'll actually go through your pipeline and then create for you the Python egg file. And so once we build the file, we can then add the egg file directly to our Spark session context. And the Spark context is right here, Spark session dot Spark context dot add pi file. And you can just put the location right inside of there and that's gonna be built inside of the source slash dist and the name of the project. Now, the problem here is that the version number of the project is actually going to change the version number of the egg. So you're going to want to actually import that version number to make sure that you're getting the most up-to-date egg file. And so this version number is actually located inside of your project's module root inside of the init pi. And so that's right here under pipelines. You have this underscore underscore init. The dunder version is right here. So you can grab that guy directly from the project root. In this case, it's PySpark demo with the version here. And so now we've assured ourselves of always getting the most up-to-date egg file and adding that egg file inside of our Spark session. So the pipelines here are also very straightforward. This is again our Iris example. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and try running this guy and then taking a look to see what the output looks like. And there it goes. It works just like any other project pipeline. And so that's one of the beautiful parts about Kedro is that no matter what technology you're using, no matter what crazy configurations you have, as long as you are following the Kedro framework, it is super simple and easy to run your pipeline as you please. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you guys have made it this far, make sure you button that like, sub that subscribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are pipelining. And I hope I see you guys at EuroPython Conference 2020. See you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.